Hello, hello. Welcome to Chapter 2, Network Models and Double Spends. This is where we move from a central operator to a peer-to-peer -peer network of nodes, and we look at some of the problems that may arise from this, like the double spend. So, before we had a central operator, and that central operator ran all of the code of our payment processor and applied all of our transactions and store all of our balances and nonces. And our users would sign transactions and hold their private keys, each one of them having a different private key. Now, the problem with this is the central operator is able to update balances, you know, subtract 35, minus 85, without any oversight from the users. The users wouldn't be able to tell. The operator is just doing it on their servers, and the users have no insight into this. This is a problem. We don't want this. We don't want the central operator to be able to alter balances and not even be able to be detected. So we introduce client-side validation. This is where the clients validate the transactions themselves. And that means that they need to run all of the code of our payment processor. And so that includes storing balances, nonces, as well as their private keys that they were storing before. Now, we're also going to do this over a peer-to-peer -peer network. So each one of these nodes exists somewhere in the world and they're all interconnected, sending messages to one another. Now our network may not be entirely reliable. We may have a shark eat our message and have dropped packets. Or maybe our packets just take a long time to send. And so we got latency problems. And so we're going to go over these, these problems and how we can model them in our networks in synchrony section 2.1, where we talk about synchronous, asynchronous, and partially synchronous networks. We also notice that each node has a different set of transactions. This gerbil has these two transactions. And remember, each one of these nodes has their own concept of balances and nonces. Now, when we apply these transactions, we apply them just as we did before, subtracting 10 from one balance and adding 10 to another. And the important thing, though, is that the nodes may actually have a different set of transactions. So our other gerbil is applying these transactions. And so minus 10 plus 10 minus 10 plus 10. And so you'll notice that because the transactions are different, the resulting balances are different. Here it's 90 versus 100. Here it's 120 versus 100. So we have inconsistent state. This means that these nodes do not agree what the balances of everyone is. And that means that we need to form consensus. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, a problem with inconsistent state that can arise is this can be exploited. So this evil gerbil comes up with a bad, bad plan. And that is that they're going to double spend. They're going to generate two transactions, one that buys a house and one that buys a car. And they're going to selectively propagate those transactions to different sellers. And notice that these transactions are spending more money than that gerbil actually has, 200 versus 120. And so clearly, 120, if they only have 120, they shouldn't be able to spend 200. But they can in a naive implementation of this. So what will happen is first, we'll propagate one message to one seller and another message to another. And by the time both of these sellers receive the messages and have sent the house and the car, you know, over the internet like they <laughs> they're normally done, we will have different transactions at different nodes, and we will have inconsistent states. So this node will have received money, subtract 100 plus 100 there, and our other gerbil will receive money themselves and subtract 100 and plus 100 there. And so they both agree that the evil gerbil sent money, but they don't agree on who received it. And so this means that our evil gerbil was able to get away with getting both a house and a car. And it's all because of inconsistent state. These two sellers were fooled because they have inconsistent state and they disagree which came first. So the brown gerbil is going to think their transaction came first and the second transaction failed. And so that would leave them with 100. And the white gerbil would find that their transaction went through, but the other transaction should have failed. And so they have the 100. And so this is a double spend. This is a real problem. And so we're going to talk about this fundamental problem with forming consensus in section 2.2. Now, of course, who received it first? Well, we need to decide and we need to form consensus. And who should decide is 
a matter of our consensus protocols. So one consensus protocol is this 99% fault tolerant consensus, which is based on synchrony assumptions. So the network propagation speeds, synchronous networks, it's secure. But in asynchronous networks, it breaks. And so we'll talk about this and how we get there. So if an attacker were to break the network, you know, we'd lose our guarantees. But we'll go into this more in latency-based consensus in section 2.3. And that's before we even talk about proof of work or proof of stake, because it's based on the peer-to-peer -peer network. Another solution is, you know, why don't we reinstate the central operator and just have the central operator tell us what transaction came first. And, you know, we'll find out that that has its own problems. So that's in our proof of authority chapter section in 2.4 and let's dive in.